In today's rundown, we are talking about Twitter and Facebook cloning Clubhouse. Then we're talking about whether anyone would ever buy a Facebook smartwatch. Stay tuned. It is Monday, February 15th. I hope your weekend was filled with love. This is the Piper Rundown. We analyze business and culture to help you win. Today's rundown is presented by Jetstore. Jetstore has been providing affordable, reliable, and easy to manage data storage and cloud solutions to over 4,000 customers worldwide for over 26 years. Jetstore offers storage systems for private cloud hosting, video surveillance, internet of things, AI, machine learning, edge computing, data archiving, HPC media production, medical imaging, and flight simulations. For more details, visit jetstore.com. Thank you for sponsoring the rundown. Nailed it! <laughs> I'm so ready for the winter to be over. Like, thank God it's halfway through February. The next month comes in like a lion out like a lamb, but... Every snowflake that falls, my soul dies a little bit. For someone who's so into fall though, like, you should be better with winter. No, I'm such a baby when it comes to winter. Our first story today is Clubhouse. We covered them, I don't know if that was last week or two weeks ago, raised a sizable round from Andreessen Horowitz uh, at achieving a billion dollar valuation very, 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 very quickly after launching. Uh, and this concept of social audio, a space where people come together, they talk, it's unstructured, less structured than a podcast, uh, more open-ended than most other mediums, um, has the hype factor and the exclusivity, is catching people's attention. It's catching people's attention in a couple of ways. The first is that uh, reports have come out, number one, that Facebook has already set in motion internal processes for developing their own social app, conference, whatever it is. I, I guess it's social audio is really what how we're talking about it. They're developing their own product. Twitter is already beta testing theirs. I don't know if you've seen that pop up yet. I've tried it twice. I've sat in on two rooms that were happening there. To me, Twitter and Spotify are the two most interesting ones. I, I mean, we'll talk about Facebook later, but like Twitter is already like the place for conversation, mostly yeah. through text and reacting to stuff. Um, so there's kind of a natural growth out from there. It makes way more sense than fleets or whatever their stories feature is. Like I never, ever, ever watched the, the fleets. I think the social audio stuff though, because I've already curated the people, like I want to hear more from them, I want to learn more exactly. from them, I want to be a part of their conversations. And because that social graph is already in place, as these two you know, relative behemoths compared to the size of Clubhouse roll out their clones, it's just gonna be another important data point similar to Instagram taking the stories feature from Snapchat mm -hmm. of how much does a simple UX being first and like owning that corner for a specific use case matter and how much power is there compared to already owning the social graph? Yeah, it's it seems to be it seems to make a lot of sense for Twitter. There there are definitely like tighter communities and pockets of people on Twitter. Like you can get into finance Twitter or Entrepreneurship. It's very, it's very interest-based. Art Twitter, 100%. sports Twitter, NBA Twitter. Exactly. And so when some of your favorite follows on there say, hey, you're invited to listen in on this chat, like, of course I'm clicking on that link. Of course I'm going to that room. Um, so it does, it makes a lot of sense for, for Twitter, um, especially because you've established so much trust there with your audience in the first place. It is like, I'm really rooting for Clubhouse, honestly. Yeah. I, I want to see Clubhouse win, um, especially because I, I, I want another tech giant to emerge. I, I am sick of seeing like the big ones that we've listed off already continue to win and just steal that attention. Um, I'm ready to see the, the wind spread out a little bit. And it's funny because Zuck was just a guest on a show that's hosted by an Andreessen Horowitz partner and his wife. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, he shows up on a Sunday night to their show and then the next week the uh, uh, note comes out that they're doing a competitor, which everyone could have seen coming because that's course. all Facebook's really good at doing is stealing um, other people's best uh, product developments. But in that same spirit, I cannot foresee using that feature on Facebook. And I think there's like a whole demo of people. It's just like the, the it, it, it's just too busy of an app. And I know that there's like the super app thing that they're aspiring to and chasing, but I, 
I don't know. To me, however the clubhouse thing plays out over the next like 18 months, we'll really kind of have a clear idea. Mm -hmm. To me, that answers the question of antitrust scrutiny on Facebook. I'm, on, I'm firmly on the position that I think the most uh, antitrust behavior is coming from Google and then Apple. Mm -hmm. I don't think that Amazon and Facebook are as um, uh, egregious or dangerous or prohibiting of other behaviors. And I think that if Facebook bought Clubhouse, then that's like cause for concern. But because of the antitrust scrutiny, I don't think that they will make that acquisition, despite the fact that Andreessen Horowitz, Mark Andreessen, the co-founder, is on the board of Facebook. If that's stopped, I think that's enough to say that as long as to some degree acquisitions are limited or uh, inhibited by this type of scrutiny for Facebook, they can be competed with. Like, like the, the growth of an entire different medium yeah. of connecting is evidence of that. Totally. And radio still exists. Like you don't have everyone's attention all the time. Facts. Um, and the last point here on Clubhouse is um, it was banned. Uh, Chinese Communist Party, the Great Wall, uh, blocked the usage of the app considerably uh, by people not only in, in Hong Kong, but across the uh, mainland Chinese continent. Uh, one of the reasons was that because, so the form factor of Clubhouse, you're having these open conversations. Uh, they were having uh, Han Chinese speaking with uh, Uyghur minorities about the genocide that is occurring in Xinjiang and um, this is one of the few instances where they're even able to yeah. communicate and there was Han Chinese you know saying I'm so sorry like this is not representative of me this is not my choice it's not something that I want um, and these intensely emotional uh, conversations which is really really dangerous mm -hmm. to an authoritarian single party uh, uh, government structure, they had to have to put the kibosh on that immediately. And for all of the ills, we've, we've had a rough year in terms of, um, you know, political unrest and the feeling of everyone's against one another and warring factions. Um, at least we have clarity as to some of the things that are happening. Uh, not perfect clarity, but, but to have that completely be prohibited by um, the, the Great Wall is pretty, pretty dark, and I think, I think it's also a good sign for Clubhouse. If they're getting blocked like that, they're clearly facilitating something pretty powerful. I agree. Uh, speaking of Facebook, though, in, their, uh, in addition to potentially being antitrust, remember when it felt like all the major tech companies were like in their exclusive domains? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, this firm is over there, that firm is over there. And now they're all basically the same thing. I mean, you got, you've, Microsoft avoids all the scrutiny, but you've got Microsoft, Google, and Amazon all fighting in the cloud space. Mm -hmm. You've got, um, you know, now this, this uh, climb into uh, smartphones where Google has their own, Apple has their own uh, operating systems. Yeah. And the smartwatches, we were interested that Amazon came out with their little Halo mm -hmm. fitness thing. Apparently, Facebook is also working on a smartwatch. Uh, they have a, a considerable hardware team. They have all the Oculus folks. They built the portal, which by all accounts is a very, very uh, high quality piece of consumer hardware. Um, and this smartwatch, similar to most of all the smartwatches, focused on your health and fitness, focused on allowing you to read messages, uh, but also a shot across the bow. It's probably something we're gonna be talking about later in the week of Facebook really coming at Apple. Apple has done some considerable, and I would argue, moving potentially into that realm of antitrust stuff, um, of you know tracking, uh, blocking trackers, uh, blocking advertising, and really inhibiting the Facebook business model yeah. to a considerable degree. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily like coming for the Apple Watch. I can't imagine. So the thing that I was struggling with as I was thinking about this is there's like an identity, right? Like you take pride in being an Android person and there is these people that, you know, having the Apple device is the status symbol, whether it's being yeah. seen with the AirPods, seen with the Apple Watch, seen with the iPhone. Th that's part of like the, like I am an Apple person, I'm an Android person. I can't think of the Facebook person. Like the person that rocks a portal owns an Oculus, I don't even, like, it doesn't even feel that way. It feels disparate. Yes. And to be like a Facebook person, you'd be like, what's up with you? I think of Facebook person and my mind goes to like very different, very different type of, of person. I like a know. mad online person. Yes, precisely. And, and I don't see that person being like a health and fitness nut yeah. per se. 
And it's like, I don't think they're gonna be able to necessarily compete from like a price standpoint with Amazon. Like there's no world in which Facebook undercuts Amazon in price and Amazon's just like, okay, we'll go down there too. Yeah. So like, what is the angle? I, it's it's literally just to compete with Amazon. Like, like Zucks and Tim Cook have clearly been feuding for a while. It or, or Amazon, did I say Amazon? I, Amazon? I meant Apple. The only way that I can see it, so, so there is news that Apple's working on their own over eye VR slash AR yeah. type of equipment. So it's clear that they would be going toe to toe on that. And the only way is if having that watch was like the monitor for while you're in VR that like knows where your hand sure. is. But you need both handles. Like, like I've, I've used it, you need like a handle for both if you're gonna use both hands. That's like the only thing that would be like, man, I love my Oculus and this watch improves my performance in Oculus, Maybe. but that's hard for me to conceive of, at least in the short term. It, uh, yeah, it might be another thing too where Facebook wants to build out, I mean like you said, Facebook is kind of trying to be everything at the moment. The Facebook Marketplace. They, I logged on. I haven't been on Facebook in forever, but I logged on recently in the last couple of weeks, and they just they launched like a dating. So it's similar to like Tinder or Hinge or Bumble that you can How like swipe. It? I I didn't build a profile. <laughs> I was like, nah, it's too much for me. Um, but like they're trying to do everything. So maybe with the, this uh, smart device. They will get more into like the Nike or the My Fitness Pal space where you can now track like your exercises and your calories and all that stuff. Like, I think they just want to be everything for everyone. I get that they want to, but I'm trying to figure out like who. Who's going to choose Facebook over something else? Like I'm trying to think of what of even my friends would show up with like, like one of them's got a Fitbit on, one of them's got a, uh, what's the, Whoop? Thank oh, you. Yeah. One of them's got an Apple Watch. Yeah. And then, and then someone has like the Amazon Halo. And then someone comes in with the Facebook, you're like, that's what you chose? Yeah, exactly. Like that's what I'd be like, exactly. why did you choose that? It's like, dude, right. Zuck said it was the best. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Um, and then in a last note here, uh, the Microsoft has come out and made a statement that the U.S. Sh should consider a similar uh, law that is attempting to be implemented in Australia. This law basically says that the platforms like Facebook and Google need to pay publishers for the content that they elevate uh, and direct people to on their service. Um, I think that the Australian law is somewhat misguided. I don't want to necessarily get into the weeds there of having to pay to uh, have those to, to direct traffic, which is the lifeblood of a media business. Paying to give the media business what it is that they are after um, seems slightly misguided to me. But Microsoft recommending this because it would hurt two of the other tech giants. Um, that business model relies on that not being the case when that's not really their business is uh, something we call a strategy credit where you know Facebook is blocked in China so they can rip Apple or rip any other companies that have engagements with an authoritarian uh, uh, communist party there because they're literally not allowed to do business there. So it's like a free win when it's not necessarily like we've made this choice, it's that we're blocked and so therefore we're trying to like turn that loss into a W. Mm -hmm. Same thing here with Microsoft, I just think that's funny. Yeah. How, would, would you be in favor of laws that hurt all of our competitors and didn't inhibit us? Uh, on on a Maybe. certain level, sure, yeah. but, but no, like that's, no. Yeah. Ridiculous. Short rundown. Um, it is a winter, winter wonderland outside. It is. Very beautiful. It's What's the biggest place. snowman you've ever made? How tall would you estimate? Pretty tall. I, I think, uh, oh, did that bounce in? Nope. No. Pretty tall. I think I've made some dank snowmans in my day. Snowmen. Made many snowmen or women. My, uh, my sister, said that at some point during this winter, she wants us to build a, a Venus de Milo snow person. I don't know what that is at all. It's like the famous sculpture with the arms cut off of the woman, the Venus, Venus de Milo, what? I'm it's not an art guy. One of the most famous pieces of art in the world. That's the rundown. That's the rundown. <laughs>